Hello everybody and welcome to week two of the biotoxin series. Um, this week we're going to be talking about virus and what viruses do to your body. Uh, hopefully you listened to the bacteria one last week. We're going to get a little bit into another little critter. So a virus works different than a bacteria. It gets into a cell. It needs a host. So viruses can't live very long on their own. They need to enter into a host, and that's how they replicate inside of a cell. So remember we talked about that most bacteria do not have the ability to infiltrate a cell. They're smaller. They can't get across the cell membrane. Excuse me, the bacteria are larger and can't get across the cell membrane, except that uh, gram-negative bacteria, many of them can. So a virus is the, all of the viruses go inside the cells. They go inside the cell, and that's how they replicate inside the cells. Now, normally, when a virus goes inside of a cell, there's a little marker that the cell gives off on the outside of the cell membrane. So it's kind of like, um, let's say if a bank robber goes into a bank, and he's going to rob the bank, and he's got a gun, and he says, I want all your money, and there's a button underneath the counter that the teller pushes, and it sends a secret alarm to the police, telling the police to come and arrest the robber when he leaves the bank. Well, that's kind of what this, the marker is on the outside of the cell membrane. So the virus enters the cell. The, um, the cell pushes this little red button underneath its counter, and this little marker comes outside the cell, telling the immune system that it has been infiltrated. So it tells the immune system that this bad guy is in here trying to replicate, trying to kill um, us. And because normally you look at this cycle, the virus gets in there, replicates inside the cell, and then liberates itself by basically destroying the cell from the inside out. The cell dies, but then a whole bunch of different baby viruses come out. If that cell marker is able to notify a macrophage, a killer cell of your immune system, that it has been infiltrated, then literally the macrophage, that big giant white blood cell killer cell, will surround the entire cell and engulf it. Kill the cell, but also kill the virus. That's how you kill viruses. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But... Um, you, you need that good white blood cell, that macrophage response, to be able to kill that virus. So it doesn't do exactly what you see on this slide. So, uh, because normally a virus, again, there's another picture, gets inside the cell and it explodes itself out, a whole bunch of little baby viruses, and it destroys the cell. Well, your body will rather sacrifice that cell that's going to die anyhow, by surrounding it with a macrophage and killing it. It gets worse, though, because some viruses get inside of a cell. Let's say this is cardiovascular disease. Remember I mentioned that H. pylori is one of the major causes of cardiovascular disease. Well, there's several viruses that are also major causes of cardiovascular disease. And here's a nice little picture of exactly what takes place. The virus, or whatever the pathogen is, in this case a virus, gets inside the intimal lining cell. The intimal lining is that red lining that you can see in this picture where there's a whole bunch of little different bugs and viruses and bacteria. Well, a virus gets inside that intimal lining, it starts to reproduce and your body cr it creates literally a blister underneath that intimal lining that gets bulged into the lumen of the vessel uh, because it's creating this inflammatory response. And then cholesterol actually tries to plaque over that bulged blister that's blistering into that uh, where the blood flows, that lumen of the vessel. And then cholesterol gets the name of being the bad guy, and it's really not the cholesterol's fault at all. It's not this giant cholesterol plaque. It's an inflammatory response due to a pathogen in the intimal lining of the vessel. We'll talk a lot about that because we have a, I have a whole series of presentations on cardiovascular disease and how you can take care of it from a natural approach, too. But this is actually what takes place in one single slide. The virus is a major cause of cancer as well. Uh, because it infiltrates the cell, it can replicate in the cell and damage the DNA so that the DNA, now you have an epigenetic cause of cancer. So the DNA 
it changes the replication cycle and the cell starts to replicate. So in that case, it doesn't kill the cell. It causes a change in the DNA so that it's in a rapid replication phase. That's what cancer is. So it's replicating, replicating, replicating a cell that isn't acting like it's supposed to. Let's say if it's a liver cell, it's acti not acting like a liver cell. It's just in a rapid replication phase. Virus changes the DNA. Viruses also can be responsible. This picture uh, talks about a bacteria starting an infection, but uh, any of these that we're talking about can be what could be in an inflammatory cycle. So it's this vicious cycle of inflammation that uh, just continues to go on and on. So in this case, a lung tissue is infected by a virus or bacteria. Inflammation is at the at the, at the site. The inflammation is actually a Th1 response trying to kill the virus. The immune systems try to attack it, but it, the, 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 the um, virus is intracellular. So remember I said that when a virus infiltrates the cell, that marker goes up on the, si on the outside of the cell. Well, here's the bad news. There are certain viruses and certain bacteria, both H. pylori and uh, Borrelia, Lyme disease are two of those bacteria that have the ability to disable that marker. So it's almost like they're a really smart bank robber who already cut the phone line so that that teller keeps pushing the red button and no police come because the, dis the phone line has been disabled. Well, they are responsible for ca causing then this just this chronic, vicious inflammatory cycle. So there's an infection, the immune system's trying to kill it, can't find it, causes all this inf inflammation. The, the, inf the, the um, bacteria or virus then goes extracellular, goes into another cell, starts to replicate in there. The immune system fires, tries to kill it, can't find it, and it's just this constant vicious cycle. Uh, if that's in the lung, you could get all sorts of problems with it. If it's in the brain, you got a really bad problem because you got this constant ramped up infection uh, in the brain that your immune system is unable to kill, and you just got this this inflammation that just goes in cycles. So this person has memory lapses, then maybe a day for a few hours, they feel kind of almost back to normal, and then they lost their memory again. It's just a horrible, vicious thing that you see with chronic Lyme, MS, uh, Epstein issues that are chronic viral or chronic gram-negative bacterial infections. How do you kill a virus? Well, it's kind of like killing a zombie sometimes. That's a gross picture. I'm not into zombies, but it is. If they're very, very difficult to kill. Their uh, antibiotics do not work on viruses. There are some medical, oops, there are some medical um, uh, antiviral agents, but they have a lot of side effects. So I, uh, I never would recommend uh, taking an antiviral. That's just me. So there's just way too many side effects that are coming out all the time on antivirals. Eating a good diet to boost your immune system is the way to do it. So you got to get enough macrophages. You need a strong enough Th1 response to kill these things. There's a ton of uh, antiviral supplements out there. I love this immunoberry, especially for kids. It tastes good. It's got elderberry syrup in it and a bunch of other things. It's just a great thing. Immunotone is a, is a, a supplement with a, a bunch of different things in it, a lot of medicinal mushrooms in there. We have our own medicinal mushroom product that we use a lot for patients. You can also kill it directly with like um, colloidal silver, hydrogen peroxide, MMS, different things like that that could kill a virus um, in, uh, from direct contact. Obviously, the best way is to live a healthy lifestyle. So that's what we want to promote all the time, making sure you get enough sleep and you're eating good food and uh, etc. So uh, that's it about viruses. Next week, it's about mold. And that's going to be a long one. So keep your shorts tied tight because we got a lot to go over. All right, Dr. Connors, thanks. I'll see you next week.